arriving in Kavala, which is biblical Neapolis. And from there, we're gonna go to Philippi today. Again, you can see our whole voyage from Athens to Thessaloniki and Berea to Kavala and Philippi, Istanbul, Dikli, which is Pergamum, Kushadasi, which is Ephesus, and the island of Patmos. Last night, the ship's voyage was from Thessaloniki to Kavala, which is Philippi, for today's adventure. So this is Kavala, and you can see the lights. See those lights there? That's the road we're gonna be going on. And right about in there somewhere is the Ignatian Stone Road from 2,000 years ago that Paul walked on, and we're gonna get off the bus and walk on that too. was added by a Greek Canadian, San Panopoulos. We like to mess up with your food a lot because you stole our lasagna. Uh, like the first pasta was invented in southern Italy uh, around Naples. It was called lagana in Greek, eh? Mm. So we know it's a payback. This is the baptistry of St. Lydia, who was Paul's first European convert. He baptized her in the river here. Beautiful dome of Lydia's uh, baptistry, and here's Lydia and her friends. The girl had an evil spirit, and Paul cast out because of that he was put in prison, and then he was released from prison by an angel. This is the Zagatis River, where the ladies and the God-fearers were praying when Paul came and baptized Lydia right here. And we're gonna have mass right here at this site. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Be a beloved child of the Father now. I remember thinking that somebody about it on the... We were walking on the, the road yesterday to uh, talking about what it is to have a child and how great it is. Here's a parent. Jim, you're a parent. A lot of your parents. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it? Who is it? What's, what's the name of your firstborn kid? Jillian. Jillian. So what I want to do, I want to lead you in a little reflection. So I want you to take all your stuff out of your hands. Take, I'll get rid of it. And I'm going to lead you in a little reflection. I want you to use your imagination. We're going to pray through this for a minute. All right, so close your eyes. And so in this holy place, I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The restrooms are always a welcome sight and they don't have them as often as they do in America. <laughs> this Australian guy and I helped half the women go through the men's restroom to get through quicker. A while ago, while I was here, I saved a girl from evil spirits. And because of that, I was put in a prison right over there. You'll see it next. And then the angel came and helped us escape from prison. And the jailer came to me and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And I'm here to proclaim to you, who are also asking the same question, what must I do to be saved? Here are our three groups with their three guides beginning our tour of the archaeological site of Philippi. I had them all sitting up there. I didn't get a picture of it, unfortunately, and I just talked to them about what must I do to be saved, but they're all up here and I pretended I was St. Paul. So now we're going to go through that arch to the archaeological site. There's no more important question in all the world because someday the great cloud is going to engulf you and there's going to be a road and it's going to have a Y in the road. And at the moment that great gulf of death encompasses you, you're going to be told which road you go this way or that. And it's then forever and ever and all of eternity. There's a story of a man who stretches a tightrope across the Niagara Falls. And he gathers people together on Sunday morning, there's thousands. And he says, how many of you believe that I can walk across that tightrope and get to the other side? They all start cheering. Yes, we believe you can do it. We believe you can do it. So for an hour, he just balances and he gets on that tightrope, the windy, and it's jerking and he gets to the other side. He gets to the other side and then he says, they think it's over. He says, no, no, I'm going to go back again, but this time I'm going with blindfolds on my eyes. How many of you believe I could go across with blindfolds on my eyes? And they all said, we believe you can do it. We believe you can do it. And he put the blindfolds on, and an hour later, he ended up on the other side. They all cheered, thinks the, the show is over. He said, I'm going back one more time, even though I'm exhausted. He said, but this time I'm going across with the blindfolds on my eyes and with a man on my back. And then he asked for a volunteer. <laughs> They were all yelling, we believe you can do it. We believe you can do it. But when he asked for a volunteer, no one stepped forward. This is the biblical word, believe. They all said they believed in him. But when it came to putting the feet on the ground and actually obeying and trusting their lives into his hands and doing what he said, like being baptized and repenting and all of the things that were required to do, they stepped back and said, no, not me. This is the biblical word, believe. This is St. Paul's Prison. I'll show you down there in just a moment. And here's our group coming up the very narrow pathway to see this. Inside the prison where Paul was kept. Okay. And up there is the prison of St. Paul with a long line to go in and see it. And then here is Philippi. This is part of the Ignatian Road, which we're going to walk on a little bit. That went right through the city of Philippi. These are all the ancient building foundations anyway. The Agora, the center city center, where the markets were and the business took place. And this is really amazing. It's always lovely to be here. This is where St. Paul came to preach the gospel. As we walk through the ancient city, we're walking on the stones of the Ignatian Way that were there before Paul's time. We're going to walk on a more extensive section of that road on later today. It's nice to have our seat as a group all put together and reserved in advance. Look at those Greek salads. So we have the whole place reserved just for us. I always
we stop here with our groups on this out of the way place. This is the actual road that Paul walked. On. So here everybody's getting off the bus to walk on the Ignatian Way between Neapolis and Philippi. And we know that St. Paul walked on this road. This is the Ignatian Way. Paul, 2,000 years ago, you would have seen him, Silas and Luke. I mean, walking down this road. Now we're all walking down it. Welcome to the Ignatian Way, folks. When filming our St. Paul movie, Janet and I had to discover this road. Nobody knew it was there. We discovered the Ignatian Way in the weeds and dug around. Now they've got it all cleaned up and everybody can see it, but we always bring our groups here because we're walking in the footprints of St. Paul. He walked on this road from Kavala, which was Neapolis, all the way to Philippi, and they love walking on those footprints of St. Paul. On the way back down toward the coast, we saw our ship in the harbor waiting for us. Well, it was an honor for me to have you as a group. And individually, I would like to thank you all. I would like to thank uh, Steve, uh, Janet, and uh, of course, uh, to our great driver, Dimitris. Who, uh, So thank you very much. Thank you. Heading back to our ship in the port, but first we stop at the monument to St. Paul. This story, it reads from left to right, the man from Macedonia calling Paul and saying, please come help us. Paul call it stepping across the sea and to the first time on European soil. And he heads to Philippi where we just walked. back to our celestial journey ship just in time we had a great day these ships are so big i'm amazed they don't just sink into the water sometimes like i can't believe airplanes can fly farewell kavala and philippi After an hour and a half of rest, I gave my talk on St. Paul of his life and travels and theology. We're off to a good start with the first half of my talk, and I'll give the second half another time. But since we're doing the footprints of St. Paul, this was a great place on the ship to talk about St. Paul and his life.